This is now a certainty. Yesterday, which was the 15th of November, SpaceX was officially given the approval from the Federal Aviation Administration and the Fish and Wildlife Service to move ahead towards the second flight of Starship, currently targeting the morning of November 17th. The final step in securing a license was the completion of an environmental review by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, or the FWS for short, of upgrades to the Starship launch pad at the Boca Chica, Texas site, notably the addition of a water deluge system. That system is intended to reduce the potential for pad damage seen in the first Starship launch back in April. The FWS, in a statement earlier in the day, said that it had finalized its review and concluded our formal consultation with the FAA. The review formally started on October 19th, and the agency said then that it could take up to 135 days to complete, but that it did not expect to take the full amount of time. The review found no significant environmental changes caused by the deluge system as well as other adjustments, such as an enlarged area searched for any cultural artifacts. It concluded the findings of the original review are still substantially valid and pertinent conditions and requirements of the prior analysis and approval have been or will be met in the current action. As a result, the FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental, policy, and financial responsibility requirements, the agency said in a statement on Wednesday. The launch license applies to all phases of the proposed operation, the FAA said in a statement. After consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and a written evaluation of the 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, the FAA concluded there are no significant environmental changes. After getting the license, since SpaceX confirmed it's now targeting November 17th for the test, with a two-hour launch window starting at 8 a.m. Eastern. CEO Elon Musk also shared excitement guaranteed. The main characters for this film, Ship 25 and Booster 9, have also been restacked, ready for launch. The nearly 400-foot-tall rocket is scheduled to lift off from SpaceX's privately owned Starbase spaceport in South Texas during a two-hour launch window opening at at 7 a.m. Central this Friday, shortly after sunrise on the Texas Gulf Coast. The weather forecast looks favorable for launch Friday morning, but the launch team will evaluate upper-level wind conditions throughout the countdown before giving the green light for liftoff. Residents of Cameron County and those in the nearby area may hear a loud noise resulting from the rocket's 33 Raptor engines firing upon ignition and as the vehicle launches towards space. But what people experience will depend on whether and other conditions, the company said in a statement. The event will be streamed live on SpaceX's website beginning 30 minutes before liftoff. Most notably, November 17th isn't set in stone. Pre-launch workflow still needs to occur to ensure that Starship is ready to fly, but SpaceX is as close as ever for the integrated flight test number two. The aims of the upcoming test flight will be similar to those of the April mission. If all goes according to plan, Super Heavy will come down in the Gulf of Mexico not long after after launch, and the Starship upper stage will almost reach orbital velocity before splashing down near Hawaii. But there are plenty of risks throughout the flight profile, ranging from engine reliability to the redesign of the rocket's stage separation mechanism. On its maiden flight, the Super Heavy Starship launch pad was heavily damaged. Since then, it's been reinforced and equipped with a powerful water deluge system to help deafen the acoustic shock of engine ignition. A new hot staging technique was implemented to begin firing the Starship upper stage's six Raptor engines while still attached to the Super Heavy first stage. The traditional technique, an engine ignition after separation, failed to work properly during the first flight. The Super Heavy also was equipped with a more robust electronic steering system to move or gimbal engine nozzles as needed to maintain the proper trajectory, and the rocket's self-destruct system was upgraded to make sure it would act promptly if needed. The new staging system will be put to the test about two 
2 minutes and 40 seconds after liftoff when the first stage engines begin shutting down after boosting the rocket out of the dense lower atmosphere. The Starship's six Raptors will ignite while the upper stage is still attached to the booster using a new vent system to deflect the exhaust away from the first stage. The Starship should separate from the Super Heavy moments later and continue to climb to space. While designed to be fully reusable, the Super Heavy first stage will not be recovered. Instead, it will carry out rocket firings to slow down as if it was heading for a landing pad, but will ultimately fall tail first into the Gulf of Mexico instead. The Starship's engines, meanwhile, will continue firing for another five minutes or so, then it's expected to coast around the planet, falling back into the discernible atmosphere about an hour and 20 minutes after launch. Much like the first stage, the Starship is designed to be reusable, but no recovery is planned for this initial flight test. Once again, as SpaceX sums up the countdown on the company's website, excitement guaranteed. In other news, United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno also said, the path to Flight 1 is clear for Vulcan. The company remains on track to fly the vehicle for the first time on December 24th, Christmas Eve. A lot is riding on the new rocket, not the least of which is ULA's hopes of competing with SpaceX, the one rocket company that rules them all, and its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Since its initiation in 2014, the Vulcan Centaur has encountered numerous setbacks in its development timeline. Once operational, this rocket is poised to succeed the ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV, boasting several technological innovations designed to attract customers such as NASA, the United States military, and commercial entities. Notable among these innovations is the incorporation of Blue Origin's BE-4 rocket engines in the first stage, which utilize liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. The first stage's section, housing these rocket engines, is intended to be reusable. In contrast to the cutting-edge first stage, the Centaur second stage has a long and venerable history, having been in use since the 1960s. Another distinctive feature of the Vulcan Centaur is its adaptability to various solid rocket boosters, two, four, or even six, depending on the specific payload and destination requirements. The Vulcan Centaur has already secured significant commitments from important customers. Notably, it is slated to launch the Astrobotic Peregrine Lunar Lander on December 24th, marking the United States' first attempt at a moon landing since the conclusion of the Apollo program. Additionally, the rocket is scheduled to launch the Sierra Space Dream Chaser space plane in April, with the Dream Chaser intended for cargo transport to and from the International Space Station. The United States Space Force has allocated 21 satellite launches to the Vulcan Centaur, sharing this responsibility with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch systems. The pivotal question surrounding the Vulcan Centaur revolves around its ability to compete with heavyweights like the Falcon 9 and Heavy. Recent reports from Reuters estimated a launch cost of $110 million for the Vulcan Centaur, significantly higher than the $62 million associated with a Falcon 9 launch. It's worth noting that this cost is likely to escalate further for configurations incorporating strap-on solid rocket boosters, or SRBs. However, the Vulcan Centaur is not the sole contender preparing for its inaugural launch. The Blue Origin New Glenn and Rocket Lab's Neutron are both slated for a 2024 debut. These rockets, featuring reusable first stages akin to the Falcon 9 and Heavy, are expected to pose strong competition due to their cost-effective reusability, a factor that may challenge the Vulcan Centaur's competitiveness in the long term. Despite these challenges, the Vulcan Centaur does have two notable advantages. The uncertainty surrounding which launch vehicles will remain operational operational five years from now is a question-defying accurate prediction. The launch industry has witnessed unexpected developments as exemplified by SpaceX's meteoric rise to dominance, which no one foresaw at the company's inception. The wild card in this scenario awaits its turn on a launch pad at the SpaceX Starbase Complex in Boca Chica, Texas. The Starship rocket, when operational, holds the potential to render previous launch vehicles obsolete. Its unprecedented launch cadence 
and capacity to carry massive payloads into space are characteristics previously confined to the realms of science fiction. Thus, it behooves the ULA and the other aerospace entities to strategize how to navigate this groundbreaking development when it materializes. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Once you sign up to become a patron today, you'll gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.